Hello. I'm Sean Locke, and welcome to Argumental, the show where the hottest names in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Issues like, is haggis the solution to the world food shortage? <laughs> Let's see how hungry these people are. <laughs> should undertakers have a dress down Friday? <laughs> and should all paedophiles be liquidised? <laughs> and drug dealers made to drink the juice? <laughs> Now, that's what I call a non-innocent smoothie. <laughs> Here to argue such burning issues are our teams. In the red corner, Captain Sean Walsh and his guest, Stephen Mangan. <laughs> and in the blue corner, Captain Robert Webb and his guest, Tim Vai. OK, let's kick off with round one. Tonight, the subject under discussion is retirement. Codgers, biddies, fogies, old farts. What do they do all day long? Oh, shoot me now. God, I'm bored. This should finish me off. <laughs> but the issue I want the teams to argue over is this. We should all work until we die. Supporting this statement on behalf of the blue team, it's Tim Vine. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we should all work till we die. That is possibly because you can't work after that. <laughs> but also because I want to talk to you today not about money, but about happiness. You look like the kind of people with, for whom happiness is more important than money. You know, there's a shop, ladies and gentlemen. I won't tell you the name of the shop. That would be advertising. I'll just give you the initials. B&Q. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they hire people who are old. They say, can I help you? Do you want a boiled sweet? That's what someone said the other day. Do you want a Werther's? I thought, that's original. <laughs> but there are many different jobs that you can have. This is the great thing about living on planet Earth, ladies and gentlemen. There's so much variety. And you can keep that variety going until you're older. I went to a careers office and I said, I want to work on a submarine. He said, overseas? I said, no, that's a hovercraft. <laughs> but there's a downside I want to warn you about, ladies and gentlemen. My great-grandfather, well, my grandfather, but he was a nice bloke, he... <laughs> he said to me, do you know, when he died, he left me all of his effects. Yeah, it was a smoke machine and a wah-wah pedal. <laughs> But ladies and gentlemen, when he retired, he lost his marbles. <laughs> and it's because he had lost his significance in life. And it's very important that everyone has a role. My mum's into role <laughs> reversal. She puts the ham on the outside. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, listen. You can work till you die and you'll enjoy it. And even when it gets tough, keep going. I used to run a dating agency for chickens. And it was a real struggle trying to make hens meet. <laughs> Now I run my own colonic irrigation business. That takes it out of you, I tell you. <laughs> I could have stood here and talked to you about pensions and saving money on pensions and saving money on old people's homes. You guys aren't interested in money, you're interested in happiness. And that is what you will have for the whole of your life, ladies and gentlemen, if you work until you die. I'm reminded of the words of Confucius. He said, how much longer are you going to do, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I urge you, I urge you, I urge you the first time. <laughs> I urge you for a happier life. Vote blue. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Opposing the statement and arguing that we should not work until we die, it's Sean Walsh. Oh, Sean. Thank you. Oh, there we go. So, Tim Vine thinks we should all work until we die. Of course we shouldn't all work until we die. We wouldn't have retirement. We deserve retirement. We need retirement. When else are we going to get to think about our dreams? When else are we going to live our dreams? When are we going to get the chance to do that 1,000-piece jigsaw? <laughs> Those word searches aren't going to do themselves. <laughs> retirement is a chance to reflect, to take stock, to pause, to look back over life and go, what just happened? <laughs> Where's my life gone? Where the fuck is my life? The last thing I remember, I was a kid. I was happy. I was being pushed around. I didn't even have to chew my food. I didn't even have to talk to people. I'd just go, gah, gah, and someone come and clean up my piss. <laughs> I want to do that again. I can. I'm retired. 
It's all right for him. His job is just to, you know, have a laugh, to create perfectly crafted one-liners. I enjoy his work. I think he's brilliant. But I don't want to see him doing stand-up for the rest of his life. <laughs> I don't want to see a 79-year-old Tim Vine telling me what happened to a Dutchman with the inflatable shoes. He popped his clogs. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, a little bit of advice. Never give Tim a noun and a verb. <laughs> Tim wants people holding down jobs in frontline services. Old people in frontline services. The orphanage is on fire! <laughs> Ring 999! <laughs> I think my tinnitus has got very bad. <laughs> it slide down the pole, which would take ages. They get down the pole and they think, what did I come down here for? <laughs> and then they'd use his pole lift to go back upstairs. <laughs> People are dying, the orphans are burning to death. Say no to burning orphanages. Say no to working till we die. Say no to Tim Vine. Say yes to Red. My Red people! <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Sean. So, Robert, Stephen, is there anything you'd like to say to support... Yeah, I would say... Your friend? Your first point, Tim, people can't work after they die. Why not? I, I agree. It's well, the bit before it we're talking about, isn't it? It's well, the things like <laughs> Michael Jackson, he's still working, still selling records. He's still pumping it out. Elvis, he's still working after long after he's he dead. Is. Bruce Forsyth is still working. He died yeah. several yeah, years ago. He died ages ago. <laughs> You can't, even when Bruce is dead, he but will still be working. Keep him down. You'll actually have to dismantle him like a rifle, just take him <laughs> apart. But our central point is that you're going to have people falling dead at the workplace. What about that? I think you're driving around... a train. Even worse, an anaesthetist. Yeah. I went out with an anaesthetist and she was a knockout. <laughs> Don't use any nouns. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use any nouns or verbs. <laughs> But what I'm not looking forward to is that, is that sense of, like, something to do with myself. I mean, I, I find it hard enough to fill a bank holiday weekend. Right. You know? Like, if when you're retired, basically, and you're getting weaker and you're losing all your, your faculties, it'd be like doing a round of golf and after every hole, you chuck a club away. By the time you get to the 18th, you've just got a bag. <laughs> it's funny you should mention golf, cos the other day... <laughs> I, was, I was playing golf with my next-door neighbour. After 18 holes, our scores were still level. He says, sudden death, that's all right, so I shot him. <laughs> he was old. Yeah. He's old. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to retirement, or as we call it in our business, panto. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in panto that age, your catchphrase, they've all got the same catchphrase, which is, remember me? <laughs> <laughs> so it's time for you to decide who made the best case. Vote blue, if you agree with Tim, who thinks we should all work until we die. Or vote red, if Sean convinced you that we should not work till we die. Please vote now. <laughs> well, that looks like a victory for the red team. Well Whee! done. Yeah. 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 Come on. Our next round is called Flip Flop. I'll give one member of each team a statement which they must support until they hear this sound. At which point, they must perform a U-turn and argue against it, then flip-flop backwards and forwards every time I press the buzzer. Sean and Robert, you'll play this one. Robert, you're going first, and I'd like to start off by arguing that nobody should go on holiday abroad. Go on. <laughs> Thank you, yes, of course nobody should go on holiday abroad. There's no need, because of climate change. Uh, soon the south of Britain will be like France, France will be like Spain, Spain will be a desert, and uh, that's sad for the Spanish, but I'll be in my big palm tree garden in Lyme Regis, reading about the water wars with the little whisper of my sprinkler in the background. <laughs> but, uh, but no, but that's the future. But right now, of course, we holiday abroad, because in Britain, it's freezing. The only way to get brown on a British beach is to go swimming near one of the sewage outlets. <laughs> Have you seen... I've seen the program Coast, it's the most bracing thing on British television. Oh my God, just watching that, I have to put up a big windbreak in my front room and start trying to change out of my freezing swimming trunks without children looking at my penis. <laughs> but I think children should look at my penis. <laughs> Give them, gives, them, gives them something to aim for. 
You have to go abroad. There's a whole new language that your wife has to talk. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's fine, because they, you know, it's all talking, so they like it, really. Oh, God, it's all gone Clarkson. Um, but <laughs> being abroad, being abroad is brilliant, because uh, you get Irish pubs, but with no Irishman in it. Uh, and so it's all the Guinness and none of the chat about Yates. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thank so, you. Do, where did you end up? Do you think we should go abroad? I, uh, I, I'm split on the issue. Really? I, <laughs> I, but it's nice going away, cos then you come back and everything's changed, isn't it? Like, a couple of celebrities have died. That's always nice to come back. <laughs> or someone's burgled your house is another one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I went to a, a travel agency. I said, I want to book a flight very short notice. AC you you've just missed it. <laughs> OK, Sean, you're up next. I'd like to begin by arguing that footballers make excellent role models. <laughs> footballers make excellent role models. They, do, they go training, they have a diet, a healthy diet, they don't smoke, they don't do drugs, they don't drink that much. Well, <laughs> they don't drink on Saturdays at 3 o'clock. <laughs> and that's... I mean, that's something to look up to, isn't it? But they also fuck other people's wives. <laughs> well, they do. They do. And by the way, it's not just at Premier League level. It's not. You go down the whole way down the Football League, they're still doing it. If you're a woman and you're watching this now and your husband is doing five-a-side football in the evenings, he's shagging someone else's wife. <laughs> His teammate's wife. And it might just be four of them because it's five-a-sides, but that doesn't make it OK. <laughs> It does make it OK, doesn't it? <laughs> Having sex is exercise in itself. <laughs> doesn't it? It's good, gets the blood flowing. <laughs> but they're terrible. They're not excellent role models. Look at Wayne Rooney. He's a terrible role model. He slips of hookers for £199. That's how much it was. £199. Why wasn't it 200 quid? <laughs> she trying to make it seem like a bargain. <laughs> they're not all just sex addicts. There are some brilliant ones, like Clark Carla. Fantastic, very intelligent football player. It's been on Question Time, been on Countdown. Beautiful man, Clark Carlisle. Gordon. <laughs> very tall, used to play for QPR, moved to Leeds, went down to Watford, then signed for Burnley. Lovely man, Clark Carlisle. <laughs> oh, I hope he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Clark Carlisle, yes, please. <laughs> oh. Clark Carlisle. But he's the only one, isn't he? The rest of them are twats. <laughs> the rest of them are absolutely great. <laughs> Thank ah, you, I think sure. we won that one. <laughs> My problem with English footballers is not that they're bad role models, it's that they're, they're, it's that they're shit footballers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really. yeah. I don't really care about that. But also, there's, there's positive things about footballers. For example, you know, you could say, yes, they have all these, these sort of sleazy affairs, but, you know, they've lifted a lot of young women out of poverty. <laughs> In a way, they're like Oxfam for lap dancers. <laughs> and they're usually about your age, and they just can't believe their luck. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, I'm not a role model, thank God. Christ, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I was a role model, I'd make everyone wear earphones. <laughs> While you're on? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, fuck off! <laughs> OK, it's time for the audience to decide who flipped, who flopped. If you think Sean did the best job, hold up your red card. If you think Robert did best, hold up your blue card. Please vote now. <laughs> That's a victory for the blue team. <laughs> Join us after the break to find out what we can learn from these people. Do you have a son that you do not know? And he does not need a commanding officer. He needs a father. Now go make some good memories together. Son, we are the first humans to set foot on this planet in over 1,000 years. Do you know where we are? No, sir. This is Earth. Everything on this planet has evolved. 
After Earth. Glade Discreet. Choose your fragrance. Choose your holder. Mix and match the fragrance refills with any discreet holder to find the perfect combination for any space. Glade Discreet. Home fragrancing your way. Life is full of temptation. Especially my life. I lost weight using Weight Watchers Online. I'm always eating out. So the Pro Points Tracker helps me keep tabs on how much I'm eating. And my weight tracker shows me how I'm doing. I've never felt this well and fit in all of my adult life. Join for free today. More Greg's exclusives in Iceland. New chicken curry pasties and delicious apple and blackcurrant lattice from just £1.50. Exclusive to Iceland. Join Donkey Kong on an amazing jungle adventure. Play alone or team up with a mate to bounce, roll, fly and thump your way through colourful worlds as you unveil the secrets of Donkey Kong Island. Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. Only on Nintendo 3DS and 3DS XL. And now register any three of these eight games by June 30th and download a fourth game for free. Only on Nintendo 3DS. Like all sofas in our Designer's Choice collection, the Escape Sofa is now half price at just £599. But hurry, half price ends Sunday. DFS. Hello, here's a little song about the Dave website. If you're really in need of a podcast which is topical and fun, then relax, chill out, fear not, and please just put away your gun. Because I'm presenting a topical podcast which you can freely use. It's available on Dave's website. It's called Alex Will Break the News. Welcome back to Argumental. Can I, sorry, can I just say, I think we should get like a bonus point to help us address the serious hair imbalance That's on true. these two teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. me, and, me and Tim versus the remaining fucking Bee Gees. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's it's not fair. <laughs> OK, on the bald team tonight... <laughs> We've got Slaphead and Shiny. <laughs> and on the red team, it's the Hair Bear Bunch. <laughs> now, it's on to our live guest round. And to help us get to the heart of the next debate, welcome tonight's special guests, battle reenactors Martin, Gemma, Christopher and Sarah. <laughs> Which one's Joey Barton? <laughs> Just, I've got to say this, though. I can see why the guys do it and see what you get out of it. Like, ah, bang, bang. <laughs> what, what do you, ladies, what do you get out of it? I get to dress like a princess. So. I see, right, right. I thought it was when I saw them fighting and you just standing there, I thought all you did was at some point you go, leave it, Lancelot, it's not worth it! <laughs> 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 how many, how many in your, in your thing? In our thing, you can get up to about 3,000 reenactors. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Why don't you go and take France back? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, you should take Sean along. He'd make a great peasant, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, thank you for coming along. And the statement I want you to argue is this. We learn nothing from history. And first up, it's Robert. <laughs> oh, Christ. Could you, um, is this quite sharp? <laughs> could you, could you hurt him with that? <laughs> I would like you to go back over there. Why? I'm not going to, I'm not going to, yes, I'm not going to do, do rabbit You are going to do things. I'm not going to do rabbit ears. No, no, no. <laughs> Did you just kick me? <laughs> <laughs> You're a peasant! <laughs> Afterwards, yeah. you take off that tin and I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> 
OK, well, we learn nothing from history. I'm going to come to our friends in a moment, but first, let me ask you this. How many cream eggs do you have to eat before you know that that was a mistake? <laughs> is it less than one? It is, isn't it? It's less than one. You go, oh, it's cream egg, chocolate cream egg. Oh, what a, what a treat. Yes, I think I'll... Oh, here we go. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, mmm. All right. Oh. <laughs> Seems a smurf just came in my mouth. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I definitely, definitely won't do that again. Two, three years later, oh, cream egg. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spit or swallow, we've been here before. <laughs> we learn nothing from history. What have these guys learned? They've learned that dressing up is fun. Well, it's true. Every child knows that, especially if they have the kind of parents who like to dress them up as Elvis. Uh, put them in oversized sunglasses to take a picture. And a few years later, dress them up as other things, keep taking the pictures, so that by the time they reach their 16th birthday, they can play them a slideshow set to something thoughtful by REM in order to convince them that they had a happy childhood. They go, <laughs> Look at this, see? You are happy. We've provided for you a happy childhood. All right, job done. Good. Off to college, we're getting divorced. <laughs> We learn nothing from history. Look at ancient Rome. OK, there they are. They had public health, they had spas, they had aqueducts, they had baths, they had all that stuff. Uh, and then a few years later, uh, civilizations invaded by a bunch of barbaric Germans. Not for the last time. <laughs> Not for the second to last time. <laughs> and suddenly you've got a couple of busy goths, you know, in the ruins going, I think I might go and do a shit in the loo. And the other one goes, what is a loo? And the first one goes, sort of, here, this. <coughs> oh, cream egg. <laughs> oh, treat. And, uh, well, of course, our friends here, they say uh, on, on their website that the, what they're doing is extreme sport. Um, yeah, come on, though. <laughs> it's not extreme sport. It's Amdram in a field. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. They're doing the same. They want to go back. Look at the way politicians talk to us. We don't want to go forwards, learn something and go forwards. We want to go back and do the same thing again, like the Germans. And the politicians <laughs> say things like, yes, we want to recapture our values. We want to go back to basics. We want to mend our broken society. Because look, look at this picture of you dressed as Elvis when you were little. There was a time. <laughs> when you were happy and life was uncomplicated, we can make it like that again. And we fall for it every time. The only thing we learn from history is that we learn nothing from history. GB Shaw, thank you very much. Vote Blue! <laughs> yes. Thank you, Robert. And next up, opposing Robert and arguing that we do learn from history, is Stephen. <laughs> Nice shiny helmet. <laughs> For thousands of years, human beings have been falling in love, they've been fighting wars, they've been building dynasties, reading jazz mags and barbecuing. <laughs> great men and women doing great things. Winston Churchill, William Shakespeare, Glenn Hoddle, and, <laughs> and monstrous villains, people who've wreaked devastation and havoc upon humanity. Genghis Khan, Adolf Hitler, Sue Barker. <laughs> History is the result of millions of lives lived. And it beggars belief that someone would suggest that there is nothing to be learned from all this rich, rich material. I mean, personally, I've learned a lot from history. I've learned that baggy, marble-washed dungarees worn with a white rope belt is not a good look. <laughs> I've learned that asking Woody Allen and Sun Yi, so how did you two meet, is not a good idea. <laughs> And I've learnt that spending a day watching an historically accurate battle reconstruction, lovingly performed by these brave, talented and dedicated people, is a day I'll never get back. <laughs> what the fuckity fuck are you up to? <laughs> and what is history? He's desperate to use that sword on the end. <laughs> <laughs> what is history? What is history? Well, it's everything that's happened in the past. The bit when I just said, what is history? That is now part of history. <laughs> and the, thank you. <laughs> and the bit when I said, you know that bit when I just said, what is history? It's in the 
now part of his... That's also part of history. And the bit when I... Yeah, you get the point. <laughs> to take it to its logical conclusion, to say we've learnt nothing from history, i.e. nothing from the past at all, would mean that we would arrive at each moment without any knowledge about anything whatsoever. <laughs> Your minds would be completely empty. You'd be what's technically known as the state of Jedward. <laughs> It'd be empty. There'd be nothing there. History has taught us everything. There is no mystery. Everything we've learnt, we have learnt from history. Vote red! <laughs> well, angry, Thanks, Stephen. And uh, thank you to Martin, Gemma, Christopher and Sarah. <laughs> They're off to Nando's now. <laughs> OK, what, have you, what are your thoughts? How are you going to support your teammates? Give me an example of what we've learnt from history. Well, we've learnt that we should never invade Afghanistan. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> well, we do learn stuff from history, don't we, Robert? You know that. You went to university, you've learned stuff. Yeah, I've learned stuff, yeah, but I'm saying we, we as a, as a species, we've learned nothing because we keep, we keep doing the same things again. Afghanistan, uh, invading Russia in the winter, those are the two main ones. Yeah, every bloody... <laughs> every bloody winter, my wife says to me, Sean, <laughs> not again. <laughs> Come on! No, we learn, of course we learn from our history. We learn from our internet history. We learn to delete it when someone says, can I borrow your laptop? <laughs> that, that's so that we can... Yeah, that's so that other people don't learn from our history. <laughs> history, history, history. It repeats itself. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be the only thing we learn from history. What did Henry VIII teach us? He taught us a lot. He taught us, you know, keep it... keep it wet. <laughs> I thought you could uh, keep it real, keep it real. Well, you don't keep it wet because he got syphilis, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Green sleeves meant that that's basically... That's the state of his sleeves. <laughs> he didn't actually write that, did he? Someone he else wrote it. that, didn't they? Uh, but we didn't learn that from history. We learned that from QI. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. He died of a surfeit. A what? A, a surfeit. That's to say, too much. That's just the, the word they used. Too much. He just ate and ate and ate and he slightly blew up. Like Elvis. <laughs> he blew up from the inside. Well, I've learned stuff in my life. Like, never read a pop-up book about giraffes. <laughs> never trust an electrician with no eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's twice as many eyebrows in the world as there are people. <laughs> <laughs> we need it. Once again, the audience will decide who made the best case. It's a blue card for Robert and a red card for Stephen. Vote now. <laughs> I think that's uh, a win for the blue team. <laughs> well done, Matt. Before we go, there's just time for the picture round. I'll show the teams a series of images. All they have to do is suggest what argument the picture is proving. Here's your first picture. <laughs> That's an argument against wheelbarrow races. Mm. <laughs> an argument that um, it's not just at school that uh, if you forget your kit, you have to do it in your pants. <laughs> That's an argument against police forensics being sponsored by Speedos. It's an argument for laying invisible hookers down Fifth Avenue. <laughs> That's an argument against synchronised cottaging. <laughs> Next picture. <laughs> it's the Al Jazeera remake of Lassie. <laughs> it's an argument for what happens when Paris Hilton goes shopping in Qatar. <laughs> By the way, if you've got an Islamic dog, Muslim. <laughs> Here's your next picture. <laughs> it's an argument that in their home in Anglesey, Wills and Kate should really just move on. <laughs> it's an argument against getting Carrie Katona as your wedding planner. <laughs> That's an argument against living next door to that bloke. <laughs> an argument against the Daily Mail. <laughs> I think that's an argument for serial killers.
<laughs> OK, time to decide who won. So, you vote red for Sean and Stephen and blue for Robert and Tim. Vote now. Red! <laughs> well, that's blue. Oh, right, now, uh, now, that's blue. I think that's a victory for the blue team. <laughs> So that means tonight's <laughs> winners are the blue team. Thank you very Three. much. <laughs> Thanks to tonight's guests, Stephen Mang and Tim Vine, and our captains, Sean Walsh and Robert Webb. Good night. <laughs>